The College of the Bomb is heightening security after a student was robbed of a laptop last evening. According to a COB press release, four men approached several students and ended up stealing a laptop. The suspects fled on foot. Campus security and police officers gave chase and caught one of the suspects. In light of this reported incident, security measures have been beefed up. As the holiday season approaches, students and staff are asked to remain vigilant and adhere to the safety measures, including walking in groups, parking near the security booth, ask a security officer to escort you to your car. Personal and valuables should be properly secured. Minimize the amount of cash you carry, lock your car, and secure your keys. Well, senators met briefly this morning to table first readings of a number of bills, including amendments to the Antiquities, Monuments, and Museum Act, the Disaster Preparedness and Insurance Act, the Pawn Brokers and Secondhand Dealers Bill, amendments to the Bail Act, the Investments Funds Act, the Companies Act, and the International Business Companies Act. They also tabled a number of resolutions, including one that makes provisions for more land to be granted to the Clifton Heritage Site. The Senate meets again next week. Rory J. Sands is no longer chairman of the Antiquities Monuments Commission. This according to reports reaching our newsroom late today. Now we spoke with the minister responsible, Charles Maynard, who confirmed that he received a letter of resignation from Sands yesterday. Maynard says he regrets her decision to leave after two years. However, Sands stated that she wanted to return to private life. Well, seven months after its 51% sale to cable and wireless and a subsequent separation package, BTC is reportedly getting set to hire new staff. Vice President of Sales and Marketing Marlon Johnson confirmed this. So we put the question, why let so many people go if they were needed? There's skill sets, needs, requirements um, be recruited. And so I think that that really is a reflection of that. It, 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 one exercise really isn't related to the other. There, there are certain elements of the company that are that um, needed, you know, more attention. There are certain elements of the company where we want to have greater focus on it. Certainly, you know, we're doing our, certainly our sales and support and, and in other areas. And, um, and our ambition is to get the right complement of staff with the right skill sets in, in the right areas. Well, 300 psychologists from around the region getting a chance to network with their counterparts here in the country. The psychologists are attending a week-long conference hosted by the Bahamas Psychological Association. Here's Fern Carey. Among those attending the conference, heads of national psychology associations in the Caribbean, heads of departments at universities and colleges throughout the region, and psychologists from South Africa and the Far East. It's an impressive lineup of A-listers who are here to share their knowledge, experience and resources, all in an effort to address the mental health challenges tied to crime and other social ills, reportedly common throughout the region. President of the Bahamas Psychological Association is Richard Adderley. We've got depression, we've got um, substance abuse, we also have unemployment, okay? And what we're realizing is that we need to capture these things because so many of these issues are now attacking the fundamental family unit. If you're unemployed, if you're depressed, if you're substance abusers, these are all things that impact family life. Health officials say depression will be one of the major health care issues in 2030, and that's why Adley says it's important to establish a network among psychologists in the region in order to provide support and collaboration moving forward. Trinidad may have something that they found working, Jamaica may have something that's been working, um, and rather than reinvent the wheel, what we're now going to do is to utilize those things, see how we can enhance them and put them all together. We also realize that our psychology programs at the university level has to be enhanced as well. So we're looking at curriculums, we're looking at you know, building curriculums so that the persons who are graduating now as psychologists have the knowledge and the basic experience and requirements needed. Clinical psychologist Carolyn Roberts agrees. Depression impacts everybody because whatever happens in the family impacts on the children. So consequently, you have a rippling effect. And so our work here has just begun. And we are really looking forward to continuing the collaboration with all the other persons from throughout the Caribbean. The conference will close out on Friday. Frank Carey, ZNS News. He's operated a successful business for 16 years, but there's much more to Terence Forbes. You see, he's a pastor, district overseer, and gospel recording artist. His project was 12 years in the making and is expected to be one of his biggest in reaching souls. He feels the timing is right. 
Now, back in 2009, Forbes released the Marlon Award-winning single, Plead the Blood of Jesus, and now the full album is ready. We want to convey the message of the power of the blood of Jesus. Um, without the shedding of blood, the Bible says there is no remission of sins. And so the power of the blood, you can plead the blood over your family, your business, your finances, because according to the book of Exodus, it says that the blood shall be as a token to you when you would place it on your houses. And when I see the blood, I will pass over it. This is what the word of God says to Israel and, it, and reclaim it as the new Israel, the body of Christ. Now on Friday at the Church of God East Street Tabernacle, a free album concert will be held in collaboration with a number of other leading gospel artists. Forbes is using the release concert to raise funds for the Ranfilly Home and the Children's Emergency Hostel. Also our Church of God of Prophecy Children's Chapel, we will also um, aid that particular ministry because they're touching lives in the inner city also. Final question, what can people expect on Friday? Expect worship, expect the glory of God. We're expecting miracles to take place. We've been rehearsing, we've been practicing. We have an awesome band. Okay, now it's time for our business and financial report. Welcome to tonight's edition of The Business Beat, sponsored by Royal Fidelity. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Alta Bees Mornings. Let's take a look at what's making business news today. Grand Bahama Power Company officials planning to develop a fuel hedging policy that can be used to either partially or fully lock in the price of the fuel supply, which will help stabilize the fuel surcharge of Grand Bahama Power Company customers. Grand Bahama Power's President and CEO, Sarah McDonald, revealed plans for the new program at the ICD Utilities Annual General Meeting Tuesday. This will mean GBPC's fuel purchases will be based on an average of prices over time instead of one price in a given month. The hedging program will not reduce the long-term price of Grand Bahama Power's fuel oil, but rather reduce the market volatility in what it pays for oil and what the customers pay for electricity. Commonwealth Bank Limited reported a net income of $8.5 million for the third quarter of the year, dropping by 33% or $4.2 million for the same quarter last year. Key highlights include net interest income was at $29.1 million. The bank's net interest margin remained consistent at 70% over the last four quarters. Loan impairment expense of $9.1 million jumped significantly, more than doubling the $3.7 million recorded in the comparative quarter of 2010 and half of the total amount recorded by the bank last year. With economic weakness expected to continue for at least the next year, Commonwealth Bank must focus on the management of its non-performing loan book as well as control of its non-interest expenses, as these will be the key determinators of the bank's bottom line during the remainder of 2011 and the year 2012. And this note from the Ministry of Finance, the Business License Valuation Office will be closed half day this Friday, November 18th, and reopen on Monday, November 21st at its new office at Charlotte House, located on Charlotte and Shirley Streets. From the international business scene, European Commission President Jose Manuel Barroso warned that the Eurozone faces a systemic crisis that needs deeper integration to resolve. His comments came as figures showed Eurozone inflation was stable at 3%. And in regional business, the United Kingdom government has asked the Cayman Islands government to sign a mutually agreed framework for fiscal responsibility. However, the Cayman Islands has opted not to sign because Cayman Islands Premier Makiva Bush said such an agreement has the potential to impact not only the government's financial policy making, but the territory's broader economic status and the government's overall performance in terms of good governance. Remember, you can send us an email or join us on www.znsbahamas.com or or become our friend on ZNS's official Facebook page. And that does it for tonight's edition of The Business Beat, sponsored by Royal Fidelity. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Alta Bees Munnings. <laughs>